So I said quite some time ago I was going to do this. This is my cyclocross frame. I cut it up. I was a little nervous about this before I did it because uh, I've ridden this bike many, many miles over some pretty rough terrain. I've put some pretty hard miles on this bike and I thought if I cut this up and I find out that, you know, I was just barely hanging on to my life by a thin thread of carbon in this, um, that would be unsettling. But I gotta tell you, um, it's not bad. Um, so I'm not a material science guy, uh, but when it comes to carbon, I like to see on the edges or, you know, throughout the, the laminate here, uh, I don't want to see any voids. I don't want to see any evidence of delamination when I'm looking at the carbon inside the tube. I don't like to see waves, you know, which would be indicative of maybe uh, uh, resin rich areas inside or in the carbon laminate itself. In other words, maybe not enough compression when the, when the carbon resin laminate was uh, curing. Obviously, I don't want to see cracks. Um, wherever, so this is um, filler or adhesive. Uh, th so the, the frame itself uh, typically is, is going to be made up of a couple of different parts, right? You'll have this uh, top front diamond and then... Um, the, there's a joint here, which you can't really see, uh, but the, the, now the chain stays are... Uh, I'll bring the other half of this frame in here, and you'll see that the chain stays are glued on here. And then there's there's this, right? Both of these. And this, this is uh, filled with uh, some sort of adhesive or filler, right? Uh, so... I don't want to see like a paucity of this. I don't want to see voids in this. I want to see good adhesion wherever these things go together. You know, um, so yeah, and for the most part, I see this. The only, the only complaint I would have about this frame is that the, you know, there's these long longitudinal wrinkles, which I can't decide is just whether it's just, um, resin or whether it's actually wrinkle in the carbon fiber so if it's just resin uh, and so then the way that these happen is they'll, there'll be a bladder in here right and the bladder gets inflated to compress the laminate while it's curing to get rid of all the you know make sure you have a consistent um, carbon resin carbon resin laminate you make sure you don't have any voids in there uh, so it doesn't always compress cleanly at the surface and you can get these wrinkles inside of there. So this is not atypical. I mean, certainly in the early 2010s, uh, pretty much any name brand frame that you would cut apart, you'd see these things in there. Uh, but it's better if they're not there in my opinion. Uh, then there's some reinforcement around the bottom bracket area. Uh, pretty, pretty clean stuff in there, right? No voids. Right? The seat tube looks really good. This is a um, water bottle boss, so they put in some additional carbon fiber in there to reinforce that area. And there, there's the same thing with the water bottle. Uh, mount still in there. No wrinkles in here, so that's pretty good. Now if you look at these edges, right, no voids in there. There's some gunk in here that is uh, basically from my 
seat tube, the carbon grit, carbon carbon friction paste. So this is a that looks like a void, but this is actually from like I said, I'm not a pro at this, right? So my tool <clears throat> would not reach in and cut here, so that's a that's a little break there, not necessarily a void. Joint looks pretty good there. Um, this is uh, pretty consistent where they the wherever these tubes join, it seems like they have their methodology was to put a layer of carbon in here, leave a layer of carbon dangling, and then sort of have an overlay of carbon down here and then just fill that whole area with filler or adhesive. This is a mess because uh, once again, I didn't, it, you know, I can't tell if this is okay or not. Um, but basically I didn't have the tool to cut it cleanly. So I had to break it apart. So if there was some void in there, you know, it's possible that I might've missed it, but overall, not too bad for a, 200 and whatever, $280 Chinese frame. Pretty good manufacturing. So, yeah, that's what it looks like inside there. Um, let me get the other half. <clears throat> Here's the other half of the frame, which just really the only reason I'm showing you this is because this is, I cut the chain it chain stay in here and you know it looks okay it's got a big wrinkle run down the length of it uh, it's got some dirt in there because the bottom bracket shield wasn't 100 percent sealed so there was always dirt and stuff getting back in there and then there's the the bonding where it's joined together and you can see in the bond there are some real voids there. Um, that's, I think, in the adhesive, right? And then there's adhesive, 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 and then on the inside is the carbon from the front of the bike, and on the outside is the carbon from the chainstay. Definitely not a lack of adhesive. Bottom bracket, you know, not bad. This dropout area, I don't know what to say about that. I mean, I, I don't know if it's good or bad. It's not much carbon and a lot of filler, but I don't know enough about the material science to say if that's good or bad. Although this is this is where the frame failed, but not because of this. It's because the uh, the backing for the um, derailleur hanger, and by backing I mean that it was inside the frame. So what would be between the inside of the frame and the outside of the hub uh, had fallen away, and the the screws that held the derailleur hanger to the dropout. Um, stripped out and would not be solid anymore so so the dropout wouldn't the the hanger wasn't solid and you couldn't keep gears indexed so that was a that was a failure in the frame not a structural failure so and up here there's some pieces of the bladder still left in there which you know i guess that happens from time to time the bladder doesn't always come out clean uh, I think after they're done with those, they just they basically try to twist the bladder and pull it out. Sometimes it comes out, sometimes it doesn't. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's up with this filler here, but you know, that seems to be. They did that on both sides, so there's some manufacturing idea there where they, they just put like a thin layer of carbon on the outside here and some filler and I guess that just keeps gives it some structural integrity I don't know don't know but overall like I said not 
too bad. Anyhow, that's it.